What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of the Tech once again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at five things I learned about mining cryptocurrency. So stick around. So I suppose this story needs some background. Of course, I'm into tech and I did get into a little bit of the Bitcoin back in the day. So I was aware of what it was and how it sort of worked on a very basic level. And the reason it came up again was my video that you can check out here where I sold an RX 470 for about $380 on eBay. So obviously people are willing to pay a crap ton of money for graphics cards right now and they're all missing. So why was that? Well, it was due to Ethereum price going way up along with actually a couple other cryptocurrencies that we can discuss at a later time and how easy it is to mine them with regular gaming graphics cards. So pretty much the shelves got cleared out. They're still cleared out right now, even to the point to where you are seeing 970s like GTX 970s, which are not very good at mining going for close to $200 on eBay as well. The note about that is we're going to get into the five reasons now. Number one or number five, let's just go from one to five or no importance, five to one. And we'll see if it's kind of important. But number one is there is actually GPU compatibility when you start getting into mining. This is the probably the last thing I learned. And this is because I'm running, well, a mix of AMD and NVIDIA GPUs, as well as a mix of generations of both of them. So I had 9 series and 10 series NVIDIA cards, and I had R9 and RX series of AMD cards. Now, I finally figured out that not necessarily that the 970 wouldn't mine alongside of the 10 series, but it required an older driver that came out before or pre 10 series cards. So the driver that works best with the 970 and actually gets it up to about 20 mega hash a second, which is the MHS is how they calculate that by the way, is that it with the latest drivers now, it is only getting about three to five mega hash a second, making it still profitable because of the price of Ethereum, but not near as profitable enough when you consider wasting all that power on that slot there if you're running a particular setup like mine. So if you're gonna be running nine series GPUs, I definitely recommend only running nine series GPUs. Now AMD is a little bit different. There are some funky drivers that you probably have to mess around with, but I found that the 17.4.4, which is the latest Wickle driver, seems to work fine with the R9 and RX series together in the same system. The only caveat to this that I found so far is that for some odd reason, I'm not sure if it's just because of the R9 or because of the way I have my system configured, the Fury needs to be plugged into a monitor or it crashes Claymore. Now, of course, you start getting into software compatibility as well and a lot of other caveats that kind of are gotchas, but we're just going to go over like some of the main issues here. Number four is it's really hot. It's not a little hot. It's really hot to run a rig. Right now this is five GPUs and it is probably about 85 degrees in here now that I've turned off my air conditioner this that just it's just for this room it's actually kind of a window air conditioner but it, it's an it's an aeon air i don't know if you guys have heard of that before but it gets really really hot without that in here now i did initially <laughs> foolish of me put this in a very large walk-in closet that we weren't using and i put a box fan on it which seemed legitimate or at least like at least it would keep the air moving away from the GPUs. And yes, I was correct. It did keep the GPUs cool, but it turned the closet into a sauna, which then turned the room into a sauna after running for about 48 hours. 
and the AC unit or my central air couldn't take care of it. So I obviously needed to adjust that. Now, the reason it's in the office is A, it looks cool as fuck to have behind me for this video, and B, because I've been troubleshooting the shit out of it, and excuse my language, but it's been frustrating. We had Saturday, Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, all day Saturday and Sunday. Friday night, we started with the building of the uh, frame here, which I will actually work on getting plans for this frame because I am going to be doing a second mining rig for a friend. And once we go through that, I'm going to try to go through some of the steps. So if you guys are interested in particular things, leave them in the comment section below. But I went through building the frame, getting it all set up, and it looks really good. I really like it. I have a quick removable uh, system for the motherboard here. This lifts up. I'll have to go over that, like I said, in another video. And then we have the brace for the PCI extenders, etc. Also, my appearance is because of the heat. So, yeah. We're cursing and wearing a cutoff so far. This is going swimmingly. Number three, the memory overclock is the only thing that matters. Now I learned this before building this rig, but it's something worth mentioning. You can actually get away with turning power down, undervolting your card, and pretty much anything you can do to reduce power is beneficial as long as it's not causing crashes. Right now, you might see some crashes go on in the background because I'm testing an overclock on some of these cards. But, for example, if you're wanting to get a better hash rate on a GTX 1060 right now, you can get from about 15 to 19, depending on model and what kind of stock settings it already has, to up to 22 to 24, which mine are running at, if you just take that mem clock and turn it up by if you can get to 750 megahertz stable that's where you'll start seeing some good improvements on hash rate this is also good because the power settings or the power draw on these end up being lower than the i guess the competitor the amd side rx 580s or 480s but I will be honest, the hash king is still the going to be the RX 580, 480, etc. Especially with the plethora of custom BIOSes for mining that are out for all of the AMD cards. And even going as far back to like the 290s and the 280s is probably going to be a safer bet than anything NVIDIA wise. Because you can even get these RX cards up to, with a BIOS mod, up to 30 mega hash a second. For example, at stock settings, that's what my Titan X Pascal gets. Number two, powered PCI rails are a gamble. They are the most difficult thing to obtain, first of all, because they're selling out everywhere. And second of all, they're the most difficult thing to troubleshoot, mainly because you're already going to have other compatibility issues going on, which we'll get to in a second. But when I say gamble, by that I mean there are no solid manufacturers out there as of right now. And you're kind of basing every everything off of eBay or Amazon ratings. And most of these are third-party sellers on Amazon. And the first-party sellers that Amazon ships have like, two stars and I have one with two stars I got lucky most of the people in that were getting maybe four bad ones five bad ones you know they were getting there were a lot of bad rails or extensions now these are powered PCI rails so they have a four pin Molex they go out to a PCIe powered and then a USB 3.0 that goes into a buy one PCIe extender that then goes into the motherboard. Now that's a lot of pieces and a lot of components that have points of failure. So they can be pretty difficult to troubleshoot and it is probably the most frustrating thing about building a rig in my personal opinion. Other than number one, which is motherboard compatibility. Now, I say this and take it with a grain of salt because you can, if you're looking at buying a rig right now, go make sure that the motherboard supports it on a lot of the mining forums. And I definitely highly recommend doing that. But even when you go take a look at those, 
you will still see replies where some people are only getting five GPUs or this is happening or there's crashes going on, et cetera, et cetera. A lot of this is going to be due to your BIOS settings for any of these particular motherboards. Now I'm going to recommend the MSI line just because that's what I'm working with. But I will say that this particular board, the Z270A Pro, seems to have some sort of wonky issue with detection on the second PCIe by 16 slot. Now I'm pretty sure, or I think, even though the manual doesn't say anything gets turned off when you plug into the M.2 drive, I am running an M.2 over SATA drive, and I'm thinking that might be a possibility or point of failure. They're shutting that rail off or making it not communicate as well. I'm gonna have to figure that out, so I'm gonna clone over to another drive I'll let you guys know how that goes, but right now I'm running stably with five cards and that's the slot I chose not to use. Now, the, the other thing about this is that all of your BIOS settings that you're going to need to change, which I'll talk about here in a second, need to be applied before you install your Windows installation or even Linux installation, but especially Windows. Linux will adapt a little bit better. I did mess around with uh, the Xubuntu mining and the only issue I had there was AMD drivers. I couldn't seem to get them to work because I'm assuming because of the variability between the R9 and the RX series, but I'm not sure on that. Anyways, I was able to get Windows 10 stable, so that's currently what I'm going with. Of course, you would have to pay for a Windows 10 license, et cetera, et cetera. There, are a, there is another option, which is a full OS, which is ethos that you can put, pick up, and I'll put a link in the description below, but that only sports AMD cards, but apparently it's pretty much plug and play. So if you're building a mining rig from scratch, I definitely recommend just picking up AMD cards and paying 30 bucks for ethos and calling it a day, unless you're going to be wanting to mine other currencies, et cetera, et cetera. It's not going to be that flexible, but it will be very consistent. So the BIOS settings you're going to want to be checking out on the MSI board is above 4G decoding. This is for mining. It's tagged in the BIOS and it's going to be under advanced settings and your PCIe settings. It's pretty easy to find. It's going to have everything that you it's going to pretty much allow you to run more than four GPUs. Of course, that's motherboard dependent because I did have a gaming M3, which is funny because the Z270A, which is cheaper than the M3, so will let you run more than four GPUs. And the one above it, the gaming M5 will, but the M3 shuts off two PCI uh, 1.0 lanes, no matter what. It doesn't matter. You can turn everything off in the BIOS. And this is very clearly stated in the motherboard manual. So check the motherboard manuals before you purchase a motherboard. So what I did before I purchased this one is I pulled up all of the motherboard manuals and went through and checked to make sure that no device turned off a PCIe lane when being in use. Of course, I've heard on some of the ASUS motherboards, you're gonna to wanna to turn off USB 3.1, et cetera, et cetera. It gets very convoluted. I do like that MSI already has the above 4G decoding option that automatically, or automatically is supposed to let you get above four GPUs. And that's one of the reasons I really like them. I've heard really good things about the Bitcoin versions of, or the BTC versions, I should call it, I guess, but they're Bitcoin versions, whatever, of ASRock, but they're really hard to get your hands on. And most of them you have to get second hand, which means overpriced on Amazon or eBay at this point. The other things you're going to want to change is going to be the generation of your PCIe slot or slots. And in this case, I went with Gen 2. I did initially go with Gen 1, but after reading some about the Z270, I went with Gen 2. And on Gen 1, I was having some weird issues where the RX 580 wasn't being detected. Now, this could also be because of the amount of lanes that it takes up could be the issue with that other one turning off. Okay, so finally on the motherboard side, the last thing I would mention is that you need to change the bus speed. I put mine to 96. Now, of course, 
this isn't going to make it not work. But in my situation, I did notice a significantly better hash rate and just easier to find all of the devices while installing them in Windows, all of the GPUs, when this was changed to 96. Now, it could just be in my head, but the hash rate's not in my head. The hash rate is definitely better, albeit only by a little bit, maybe I would say two to four mega hash on, on the AMD cards. The GTX cards don't seem to really care, or the NVIDIA cards don't. But that's a note, at least on the MSI motherboards. Take all of this with a grain of salt. Go do a lot of research. When I said number one, I really have a number zero, which is if you're going to be building a mining rig or a cryptocurrency mining rig, do a lot of research before purchasing parts. The only reason I am having this wonky setup of multiple NVIDIA GPUs and AMD GPUs and different generations is mainly because I run this YouTube tech channel and I already had them in stock. So this is just why my build looks like that. I would never recommend building it like this. I would always recommend buying one of every single same card period, like manufacturer, everything. So AMD RX 470, four gigabyte sapphires, right? That's what I would recommend. And of course, I would be amiss if I didn't mention that if you are going to buy cars to consider the amount of VRAM that is on them, because currently the DAG is getting larger and larger. We have already surpassed two gigabytes on the DAG, which pretty much says you can't run now any two gigabyte cards because it loads all of that into the video card memory so you'll need at least a three gigabyte card the projected end of this dag or dag series that will make three gigabyte cards useless will end in april of 2018 that's projected there are a lot more people starting to mine so that could go by quicker and four gigs will end in september of 2018 once again projected so for longevity's sake, the more video memory you can get on the card, the better for you. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below. I had a fun time learning all of this. I hope that this video was useful for y'all. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you next Tuesday.